you, I'm not sure. And that's what I said. As he took my hand so softly I barely felt it. The waves rolling and washing over our bare feet. Not knowing that our future were not assured. Nor intertwined. I lay with you and I watched the colours dance across the darkening sapphire sky. And I dreamed then of all the things that for us would never happen. Your skin so smooth was as pale as the pearls encased in the oysters nesting at the ocean bed. You had lips that were never without a smile playing at the edges. Except for this night it was absent and here was I too, enchanted by all in front of my eyes I didn't even turn to notice. The light I failed to notice was gone from your eyes. The sight I failed to hear in my revelry. I could never share a night like this with anyone but you. Always never to share a night like this again. Caught sight of myself in the dresser mirror. My face was paler than normal, a combination of many factors. I'd had to redo my makeup as I had cried and my mascara had run and smudged my concealer. Now I was looking once again like a porcelain doll. One hiding their pain and suffering behind a frozen mask. I had to give a grateful smile of thanks to everyone offering me their apologies for my loss and so I had come in here to escape because I felt I was being such a fraud. Who was I as only a close friend to be stealing the sorry for your loss from your family? How dare I even have suggested doing everything here at my home to say our God was goodbyes to you. Are you alright? I admit that I found myself startled back to reality by the voice in the doorway. I'd been lost in my own reflection and my own thoughts and wasn't expecting anyone to have come to find me. The question threw me. It wasn't exactly appropriate considering the day. I turned fully to look at the speaker and shrugged, partially to dispel a further bout of crying. Did I even have anything left to produce tears? Tired, amongst other things, I guess. It's been an overwhelming... I drifted off. Nothing I could say seemed like the right thing to say. It's a lovely thing you did for the family. I didn't say anything. I had stood up and so I just stood there speechless. Come on, come downstairs. I'll get you a drink. You need looking after too. The amber on my shoulders stirred memories. This is how you and me have been for as long as I could remember. Always so tactile. I allowed myself to be steered back down the stairs. Even though it felt like re-entering the belly of the beast. But then I was guided back past that towards the reality sanctuary of the kitchen and heard as if from miles away the preparation for making me that drink. Once my hands were curled around that hot mug I started to feel better. Strange what a cup of hot care could do for a broken soul. I looked up from that cup to my kitchen companion. So often I had neglected everyone in favour of you, that anyone else who I considered a friend was here at all was more shocking than it should have been, and I took the time to drink in someone else left behind in your wake. She was taller than I remembered from last time. I had paid attention to her when she wasn't hidden in your shadow, with fiery, openly blonde curly hair like a lion's mane. Her skin was rosier than your had ever been, even before, I shook myself to dispel the comparison to you. You were gone, and I needed to look at people as themselves, not as people who waited in the wings. I vaguely remember noticing once in a group photo back in happier times, when we had all first met many sunsets ago, her eyes were an unusually warm brown, like hot chocolate. She was so unconventionally beautiful in her own right. How had I ever been so blind to see anyone but you? Today she was more understated, bearing in mind the occasion I imagined than even normal. Her dress wasn't the traditional black most people expected everyone wore to say goodbye to a lost loved one, but complimented her eyes enough for me to have noticed, remembered, the colour. It was a soft, short, slightly flowy, summery-ish brown with detail around the neck that right now I was still slightly too distracted to work out exactly what it was, only that it seemed as fine as spider silk. By now she had noticed 
that I was apparently staring intently at her and became aware she was smiling. Sorry. I turned away, embarrassed for being caught staring at someone I had not realised was as attractive as she was. I found myself comparing her not so much to you anymore, but to what I had seen in her upstairs when she had walked in on me. It's fine. Not the first time I've seen you staring at someone. Just wasn't usually me, she replied. I felt a little heat in my cheeks, undisguisable even if I looked down into my tea. Unlike her, I had a short bob of hair, which seemed more a muddy yellow colour right now because I had let it go a little, a lot, since you had been. I shook myself again to stop myself from drifting back into the thoughts of you being gone. We should hung, should have hung out more, I mean, you know, I said faultingly, still staring into my cup. The contents of which were barely touched. We will, she responded, and she seemed now to be close enough to smell a soft fragrance I'd never smelt before. It was like flowers. I was thinking about a time at the beach, I said, and she gave me an inquiring look. We held hands. And I barely felt it. And I never even noticed anything was wrong, I said. You were supposed to, she asked, not unkindly. And I shrugged, because honestly, was I? But now the tea was getting cold and I was thinking whether or not I sh would have liked something stronger. It wouldn't help and it wouldn't bring you back. But for a few hours it would dull any pain I felt that you weren't here anymore. <laughs> It hit me with a sledgehammer as I stood there with the friend I had barely acknowledged as this thing for so long. Was I angry at you? After all, you had gone and left me behind here, airing my lungs and my feet on the ground we had both trodden together for as long as I could remember. Now you had vanished. You had just upped and left. I knew you hadn't wanted to, but part of me was, yes, angry, furious that I had gone that I had to go on, whether or not I had friends like this still here, without you. So now what was I to do? I was sad. I sat on that long forgotten shore. The sun burnt the sky a rich orangey pink hue as it descended below the horizon and I was sad. Memories flooded in and I huddled myself into a tighter ball to stay warm as the day cooled in the lazy twilight. I had nothing left to express my sadness. I was alone. Everything except the buzzing of my own thoughts had left me. Here I was cocooned from the world. There could be no one who would think to find me here. Sand crinkled up to my toes. Every tiny grain was still more of a comfort now that and annoyance. Here to remind me of every wild dance. Every time I'd fallen hysterically laughing back into its harsh blanket. <laughs> Many sunrises and sunsets had passed by my eyes here. This had to be the first one I had seen alone. Something broke into my inward reverie. The sound of moving sun that I knew was caused neither by myself nor any breeze. A sound that caused me to turn. It was here, the fiery-haired girl from the kitchen, the one who'd taken it upon herself to comfort me with tea and not be embarrassed by my staring at her. Having really seen her for the first time properly without anything to distract me, her arms that had been at least partially bare at the house were now wrapped up in a thick cream cardigan with those oversized seeming buttons on it. She cuddled it about her and I had to wonder for a moment if she was taking it upon herself to follow me around like some kind of guardian angel. It's so pretty here. I never knew, she said, so casually as if turning up wasn't unusual at all and I and slowly she sank to sit beside me. My heart burned like that sun's sky and I was a little less sad.